All right. Hello, everyone. This is going to be our first edition of a brand new show on here on the Strider Report called Lane 9. And our first guest this week is Lindsay Cunningham from Winona State. Thanks for taking the time to join us today. Thanks for having me. But yeah, we're going to be just interviewing athletes from various divisions and kind of getting a little more of an inside scoop from, you know, transitioning from just being a site that we do writing stuff. Now we're going to be on the video scene too. So I'm excited and I'm excited to have you as our first guest, Lindsay. So to start things off, um, kind of we'll talk about, you know, your beginnings at Winona State. So your freshman year was solid, but, um, you know, it really took a lot of kind of development to get to where you are today. You know, um, what was really impactful about your freshman year at Winona State to get you, you know, starting your career off? Well, I mean, coming in for my first fall, that was when we had the COVID season, so we didn't actually have a season. It was, it kind of worked out in my favor, I would say, because I had the opportunity to just continually stack up on my training and just like get all those adaptations without having to race or having the stress of that along with it, since it was already such a change from high school. So when you came in, because it was that weird COVID time where a lot of things were kind of up in the air, you know, what was, what was your coach's sort of plan for everyone? You know, were you just planning on trying to train and grind or maybe when the opportunity came up to race, try to find something? Um, It was super individualized, kind of depending on where people were at, but with a lot of the freshmen, it was just working on keeping up that mileage and just like getting used to the training. We did a couple of time trials, but yeah, just a lot of consistent training. Was it a little weird for you to kind of come from, you know, high school where you're racing all the time just to really kind of focus in on training, you know, in this weird time that the world was in? Definitely. And just throughout basically my whole career at Winona State, it's been a lot of training rather than racing. But I do really trust like my coach's training, so it doesn't bother me at all. And I think it's very beneficial in that way to just get out there. And when I race, just race hard and then focus on the work. I think a lot of people know you for, you know, kind of getting out hard, getting out racing and whatnot. And that could be a product too of, um, you know, some of the competition around you, you know, when you have to race solo a lot, and that was even starting from a couple of years ago, you know, what was your, what was your kind of mindset about, you know, having to have just run on your own and kind of get a fast time, you know? Um, well, I usually just go off of pace as people probably notice at nationals, even, um for indoor I do a lot of like every 200 I have one of my teammates yell out my splits mm -hmm. and I usually my goal for the race isn't usually an overall time it's more of I want to hit this split for every lap and it's more of just like if I can do that for 25 times or however many times that I need <laughs> to then yeah I'll be where I want to be but yeah do you kind of take a similar concept over cross country or is your mindset going to be a little bit different on the grass um I don't really go by time in cross country it's more just by effort but yeah kind of the same idea with just getting out and just running it running it as a true race running it for like throughout the whole extent the same pace or keeping it as close to that as possible so kind of jumping a couple a couple, little bit back um when you ran at your first national meet um back in 2021 that was um what was that experience like kind of jumping up in sort of competition there it was definitely a shock for me and a learning experience because i've never raced against that many girls of that ability before but it was so awesome to have everyone around me i i guess like the most shocking thing for me was the last two kilometers of the race when a lot of the girls started to take off and I just I've never truly raced people who have done that so it was a lot of like different and I needed to get used to that and start training in that way to be ready for that in the future did the did the brutal weather down in Florida that year have kind of an impact on you too because I know that was <laughs> as for some people as you might know you know it took a really big impact on them well um, in Winona, we do a lot of our training by the lakes throughout the winter as well. Mm. So I guess we're just kind of used to those conditions, but the footing was definitely a little bad. That oh, year. yeah. Can only imagine that. Um, but to be able to perform at a pretty high level, you know, at your first national meet right away, um, 
did that make you have some better goals for, you know, future national meets to come? Oh, absolutely. One of my coaches from high school actually texted me and congratulated me, but I told them there are bigger goals ahead. This was just part of the process. Yeah. But, you know, to still be seventh, like, you know, at your first national meet like that, that's still pretty, you know, solid accomplishment to be able to back on, but to be able to have those goals later on too. Thank you. Um, so then kind of moving forward, um, you know, even with, so when you have, you know, your regular season where maybe you're going out kind of hard, winning a lot, this goes for either cross country or track, you know, but just going out and running at a lot of like smaller meets and whatnot. Um, does it get a little weird to have to kind of jump from the really small meets to then the big meet like at nationals, you know, or maybe like a regional even? Um, Not necessarily, just because I tend to keep the same racing strategies throughout. So it's just a new place. And even like at nationals this year for indoor, it's like, oh, this is it's just like every other indoor race. It's just another track. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Um, let's talk about this year's uh, cross country national meet a little bit. Um, I was out there in Seattle. So, you know, I got to see kind of the conditions course was nice and worn, you know? Um, <laughs> but I mean, that was quite a battle with, uh, quite a battle with, uh, Cotter there from Adam state. Um, what were your goals heading into the race? I honestly just wanted to run to the best of my ability on that day, no matter where or how it played out. I knew I had some great competition and, yeah, just wanted to go out from the gun and see what I could do. Yeah, was was a title in mind or were you just really thinking of just kind of like what you said, running with effort, you know? I mean, it was a thought. It wasn't like I need to do this, but it was definitely mm -hmm. something I aspired to do. What were some of your takeaways from, you know, kind of having that goal and then, you know, second is still very impressive in performance, but... How were you kind of feeling after that sort of result? Um, I I was very proud of myself and my teammates. I think that we worked very hard throughout the season and in the summer, just having like, since it was a festival year, just that extra time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely nothing I would have done any differently. Stephanie Cotter is great competition, so. Do you consider, you know, even with her or like Robles, do you, is there any sort of rivalry between you guys or is it more like you're just good competitors and trying to beat each other on that day? I'd say definitely just good competitors. It's awesome having their, them there. I feel like it helps us all run to the best of our abilities and rise up to the competition. Yeah. Um, and even at cross country nationals this year, you guys had a really great team too. What did that mean to, you know, be able to have that sort of great team performance too. And in addition to just you, you know, at the national meet. Yeah, it made such a difference. It just made it so much fun. All week was awesome. And then at the line, just having everyone there just really calms the nerves. And yeah, like I said before, like we worked so hard for it. So it was definitely just more motivation. Um, And then and then your sister, you know, transferring to uh, Minnesota Mankato as well. What's it like, you know, having her as, you know, a fellow D2 competitor, you know, kind of alongside you now? It's super fun. I absolutely love racing her and just seeing her at all the meets every other week. It's just, yeah, it's just awesome to have that connection with her and the other girls on the team as well. So. Yeah. So I'm, I'm assuming you guys race each other a lot, you know, being from pretty similar areas. Mm -hmm. Yep. We raced each other a couple of times um, this indoor season and the 3k and the 5k. Oh, nice. And we were always, always ended up on the line right next to each other. So <laughs> oh, I'm up. Must make things a little, you know, kind of easier. Oh, my sister's just next to me on the line. That's yes. <laughs> not as much of a big deal there. Um, coming into the indoor national meet this year, um, were you, was a national title kind of on your mind, you know, sort of looking at um, either the 5K or 3K? Uh, yeah, so definitely was a thought. But then again, I just really wanted to run to the best of my ability and in both races, definitely accomplished that goal. So when, when you get to the 5k and, you know, you're kind of, you're taking it kind of by the horns, you know, what's it like to, you know, have knowing that you're probably going to end up winning this thing? It was, I was really excited even going in. I don't, I, while we were warming up and stuff, I was just smiling at everyone and just really excited to have a good time with it. So 
again, great competition and awesome girls to race against too. And being able to run fast at the national meet was always fun too. So, you know, getting yes. to run a nice, getting to run a nice PR there must have felt pretty nice too. Mm-hmm. Now, switching gears to the 3K, you know, were you were you tired heading into it or were you feeling pretty good and recovered? Well, I wasn't I wasn't feeling a hundred percent recovered, but I was feeling like decent and just like going into it, I just again wanted to run very hard and definitely was feeling it by the end of that race but so placing so well in the national 3k like that you know getting getting fourth and seeing all the times you know just from top to bottom of how competitive that race was in d2 history what does it mean to you that you know you're able to kind of compete against these other women and in this kind of landmark era of d2 women's distance running i think it's awesome i mean just having them there makes me better and no matter what place it is it's still like awesome to PR and awesome to run those times so just having them take me to that definitely was beneficial so yeah is there like kind of a friendly environment amongst all of you you know at these national meets like kind of catching up with people you don't see all season oh yes definitely it's like a little reunion (laughs) it's so much fun oh yeah those are so sweet um outdoor season this year um are you going to be you know traveling out to any of the bigger meets this year um yes we are planning to go out to california um some of our team is going to mount sac and some are going to the azusa pacific meet mm-hmm. and then also um drake relays again for sure so what do you think you're going to kind of be dialing down and focusing on this year uh, i definitely want to get in a couple 10ks and a couple 5ks before mm-hmm. conference but definitely keeping it between those two. Yeah. Thinking about any national records? I haven't really looked too much into it yet, but we'll see as we get rolling. (laughs) Yeah. Are you someone that, you know, kind of just runs and then doesn't really, you know, look into too much into the numbers or is that something that kind of drives you a little bit? No, I don't really look into the numbers. I try to just focus on like myself and the best that I can do. And then wherever it ends up falling, creating goals from there. Mm -hmm. so what are then some of your goals for this outdoor season with kind of that same thought process in mind um well I definitely want to work on my 10k just overall I don't have as much experience in it as I do with the 5k since I just started it last year Mm -hmm. so just trying to figure out a better racing strategy for there and figuring out how to base my speed off of like the length of the race so Mm -hmm. Do you think you're someone that would try to like really kind of hammer down negative split it or just kind of go out hard, hang on, see what happens? Oh, I definitely want to try both and see what, see what works for me. But yeah, I want to learn how to get out harder in a 10 K and just trust that I can hold it throughout. Yeah. The 10 K is a brutal event, but if you can hold on, it'll work out just fine. (laughs) Um, so you have a couple years left at Winona State? Uh, yes, I have two more years of eligibility for outdoor track, yes. Okay, and then are you planning on continuing to use all of your eligibility at Winona State, or are you thinking about maybe for your graduate degree, maybe moving up um, a little bit? So I will be a senior this um, upcoming year, graduating in 2024 Mm -hmm. and then I do plan to go to grad school so I will have a full year of eligibility and yes I am definitely looking to compete during that point in time uh what degree program are you gonna end up doing um exercise physiology and I'm kind of considering sports nutrition I've seen a couple of programs that have both Mm -hmm. combined so that would be really cool thinking of maybe stepping up to d1 be it'd be fun (laughs) yeah that'd be that'd be a nice that'd be a nice kind of route to do yeah Um, absolutely but yeah um so with you know you're finishing your final well I guess outdoor season and another year of being Mm -hmm. in D2 you know what's the kind of what's the kind of mark or legacy you know you want to leave on you know division two women's cross country and track um well it's just it's kind of fun to get the name out there but in general I just want to keep it fun and want everyone to stay connected and I think that's a big part of our division too is just like 
how awesome that is in that sense so I think D2 is kind of starting to, you know, gain some good traction, you know, with like yes. people like yourself, Dylan Powell, you know, like really getting the names out there mm-hmm. in terms of, you know, because everyone knows D1, you know, but mm-hmm. D2 and D3 and other divisions, you know, are starting to gain, you know, that sort of, you know, recognition too. Yes, absolutely. And yeah. Like, what does it mean to you that D2 is, you know, starting to get recognized a little more kind of on NCAA scene? I mean, it's nice to be able to get that type of respect. And even in the sense of my school, a lot of people haven't really heard of Winona, but it's fun to have like a whole team that's able to bring out that recognition. People don't ask as much, oh, where's Winona State? Yeah. <laughs> so. But yeah, once people once people stop asking that, then you know you're in a pretty good spot as a team. <laughs> yeah. Um. But even with Winona State, you know, it's you guys have a pretty successful track team as a whole as well. You know, not just you and the distance runners. Um, what does it mean as like a whole track team when you're experiencing all that success? I see you guys are doing pretty well in program of the year standings as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's super cool to have that. Just keeping the moment, the momentum rolling and everyone just seeing everyone's faces every day. Everyone works so hard and it's it's great. It's a great opportunity, great experience. So at the international meet this year, did you kind of get to experience a little bit of that momentum from some of the other events? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, What were some like the yeah? What were some like the highlights? Um, watching Kaylee Byer running her fifteen hundred. Watching her in the prelims was cool, but watching her finals was insane. That whole race was just crazy how it went out and then how it ended up. Um, yeah, watching Shireen Brooklyn the four by four. They just watching how hard they're working during their races motivates me a lot. Mm -hmm. Do you get to, do you get to train with Kaylee a lot or are you doing mostly your own thing? No, she's one of my main training partners. Sometimes our workouts are a little different just based off of the races we do, but we have a lot of easy runs together or we're always working out at the same time. So Mm -hmm. no matter what, yeah, just having her there, she's. She drops me in those 200 repeats. But I, need <laughs> I, was it, just, so. I was just about to ask, does she give you the work and the speed workouts a little bit? Oh yeah, she does. <laughs> yeah. Will, will we ever see Lindsay Cunningham rip a 1500 this outdoor season? <laughs> I don't know. Probably not this season, but I think my coach would have fun with that one. <laughs> Either that or the 800, you know, have so much fun with that. Us 10 K runners. We have, we have a blast when we step down like that. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think that's really the majority of what we wanted to cover here today. Um, Thanks for taking the time to chat with us, Lindsay. Really appreciate it. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, and good luck on the rest of your outdoor season. Thank you.